Hey ladies, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be on bleaching the knots on your wig. As you can see, the knots on this wig are black and they give this grid-like appearance. And that is a huge no-no. You want those knots to be a flesh color and that is what we're doing today. So you're gonna need your basic tools, your bleach, your 30 volume developer, some got to be glue free spray and your basic coloring tools. And we're gonna start by combing the baby hairs back into the wig and we're gonna use some got to be glue free spray to kind of spray on those baby hairs and help keep them out of the way. What we don't want is for them to kind of uh, creep out and get bleach on them. Once we have all of the baby hairs out of the way and slicked back, we are going to turn the unit inside out so that we can prepare the bleach and apply it to the inside of the lace. We are only wanting to bleach the knots of the wig and not the hair strands. So it's really important that when you turn it inside out that you make sure no, none of the loose hairs or the ends of the wig are in the way or at risk of getting bleach on them. And now we'll be mixing up our bleach mixture. We'll start with a couple of scoops of the bleach. I like to use quick glue. And then a couple drops of your 30 volume developer. I always start with a small amount mixed first to kind of see where the consistency is at before adding a little more. Um, the consistency is really important. You want a paste-like consistency that uh, does not drip. A good way to test the consistency is to kind of hold it up and shake it and if it's dripping then it's not thick enough. Once you get the consistency down you will uh, take your popsicle stick or sometimes a plastic butter knife is good. You can also use your brush but um, I feel like I have more control with the popsicle stick so I use the popsicle stick to spread the mixture onto the inside of the lace and you want to press it in just a tad because you want the mixture to cover the knot completely but not seep onto the hair strand so you want to make sure you're holding it carefully and applying it with um, enough pressure but still gentle enough to avoid getting bleach onto those hair strands once you have finished applying the bleach, you'll want to set a timer for about 20 minutes. Uh, we will keep an eye on it and check the knots in between time, but we'll start with at least 20 minutes. As you check the knots, you'll notice that many of them have started to become brown, and that is the goal. You want them to turn brown, and sometimes you'll need to add a little more processing time to make sure that majority of the knots are brown before rinsing the bleach from the hair. Next we're going to rinse all of the bleach out of the hair and we are going to rinse on both sides from the top and from the inside of the wig and kind of massage the lace um, gently to kind of rinse all of the bleach out. Um, when washing a wig, you don't want to scrub the hair. You kind of want to gently squeeze it out the way you would if you were rinsing a sponge. Um, here I'm using some uh, neutralizing shampoo just to stop the oxidation and stop any chemical process and they may still be going on and to kind of finish rinsing out the uh, bleach and making sure that all of it is out we don't want any bleach left inside of the wig because that is what comes in contact with your real hair or the wig cap that it can bleed through 
Next, we're gonna use a little Shimmer Lights Purple Shampoo. And what this does is tone the knots so that they don't have that orange brassy look, but more of a neutral brown tan um, so that it's a flawless blend with your scalp once, um, once the wig is applied. We will let the shimmer light sit for about five minutes before rinsing. Then we'll thoroughly rinse all of the shampoo out before moving forward with the moisturizing shampoo and conditioner. For the moisturizing shampoo and conditioner, you just want to make sure that you choose a shampoo with no alcohol content and that uh, is geared towards moisturizing and putting moisture back into the hair. Make sure when you're rinsing that you rinse and squeeze until the water runs clear. Um, you can use your fingers to spread the wig out and spread the hairs out to make sure you're getting all of that shampoo out of the inside of the wig and not just the outside of the way that you're holding it. Um, you wanna make sure that no product is left in the wig because it will affect the end result. I'm applying conditioner now. Conditioner is one of the most important parts of the uh, shampoo process. The polished look that you're looking for at the end starts at the shampoo bowl with a good moisturizing shampoo and a great moisturizing conditioner. Be sure to always wash your conditioner out. Um, conditioner is not intended to be a leave-in product. Uh, for your wigs, it will make it heavy. So although it won't hurt it, it will make your wig heavy and again, affect that end look. So once everything is dried, you can kind of check your work uh, by parting through the wig and you'll notice that those black grid light dots are no longer there. You can also see around the hairline that they're no longer there as well. And what this does is it sets the tone for a flawless install. Once the scalp or the bald cap is placed under the wig, it will create the illusion that the hair strands are growing out of the scalp as opposed to being placed on top of the scalp with that black dot as your giveaway. Um, I hope all of this helps. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Again, this is my way, so if you have any additional tips or recommendations, I'd love to hear those, so share those as well. Thank you for watching. If you guys learned anything from this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys on the next video.